Hey, good morning, everybody. It's six. It's about six thirty a.m. <clears throat> I'm uh I'm parked in a parking lot, <laughs> and it is about nine degrees outside, and it's about I don't know. It's hovering about twelve to fifteen degrees <clears throat> in the vehicle. Um, it's dark in here even with this overhead light on. I mean, if I try to show you something, all you see is, is darkness, so. <clears throat> so you can't see the, the th thermometers, but, um, a little bit chilly. This is, uh, the start of day four, 6.30 a.m., and... I gotta tell you, the very first thought on my mind this morning was, you're a lucky guy, Rich, you know? Um, I had these crazy dreams last night. I don't know if it's the cold or, you know, um, lack of a lot of food or, you know, what it is, but I had some wild dreams and... <clears throat> And I woke up, you know, several times through the night because there was noises and stuff going on around me. But, um, but I think about my position right now and I analyze, you know, the past, the few people that I've met along the way already. <clears throat> I, I need to start trying to capture video of these meetings because, um, they would add a, a lot to the project. Uh, credibility and and also um, just letting you see what you know what others are saying and stuff. The problem with that is anytime you even mention a camera, nobody wants to be on camera. Um, so and I don't want to hide it from them. You know I want to be real. I want to let them know you know what's up and what I'm doing. Um, and 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 I have with a couple people, but they're just not interested in being on camera at all. That I think. I think there's a tremendous amount of shame that comes along with uh, this lifestyle, you know. Uh, like for instance, right now I'm in a parking lot, and if somebody was to come up and tap on the glass, I would definitely feel like I'm doing something wrong, you know. Even though I'm just trying to stay warm and and whatnot, I feel guilty, and it's weird. Um, but getting back to this morning's thoughts, I felt so lucky, you know, because I I do have this vehicle. Um, it's cold in here, but man, just to think that um, there are others out there right now uh, engaging in battle um, under similar conditions and temperatures, I know what that's like, and you know, those guys, I give them, I give them props. Uh, there's others out there that are straight starving to death, you know, n may not eat at, you know, at all this week, like what I'm getting at is I guess the situation can always be worse, you know? And I think it's great that we have, you know, big mindsets and big ideas and and that we pursue those. I think that's that's the only way to go. Uh, but at the same time, man, it's, it's it feels so weird to tell you this. It feels so counterintuitive to, to even say it like this, but I feel like a rich man. I know some of you are like, you're tired, man, go back to sleep. <laughs> no, I... I really do feel like a rich man. You know, um, when I look at all the circumstances <clears throat> that go on in the world compared to this look at me I got a jacket I got a sleeping bag I got a go bag you know I've got all kinds of supplies and stuff I don't use it much but um, I have tried to use it a little bit I won't lie uh, let me show you I've been can you see this that's my little aluminum container from the go bag and yesterday I filled it <clears throat> with snow I've been keeping it filled with snow melting it down and <clears throat> been drinking water that way 
Um, I heated it up at one point yesterday using a fuel stove that uh, my buddy shared on Facebook. I built one and um, put a little alcohol in it and lit that sucker up and had some spruce needle tea full of vitamin C and stuff. It didn't taste all, all that good, but, um, you know, got to keep vitamins and stuff up. But, uh, anyway, just checking in and letting you know that, you know, my main point to this, this check-in, uh, other than my gratefulness, you know, to, 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 to have so much, even though it's so little, it's really so much in, in comparison to what other people have. Um, but other than that, today's going to be a busy day. I've got a lot of people to talk to. Um, I want to try to get off the streets. That's my goal. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to hang around, um, people or places that's, that's just going to continue the problem. I got to get around, um, people that can, you know, help out and d direct and guide and, uh, you know, I know this inside. I, it's, <clears throat> it's logical for us, you know, people that don't live this way on a continuous basis. It's logical for us to say, well, why don't, why don't they get help? Just go get help. Here's what I noticed after four days. This is four days. This is nothing. What I notice is your, your pride kicks in. It gets hurt. You feel like you're less than. And, uh, I mean, if, if you, you guys don't know me, well, many of you don't know me, but I've done quite a few things in my life and I've, I've raised quite the reputation, uh, of being a good man and, um, well, I don't really want to get into all that. The whole point is I've <clears throat> I've got people that love me, like me, follow my Facebook and everything else, and you still can feel pretty low doing something like this, even though it's temporary, even though it was self-inflicted. It feels low. It feels wrong. There's shame in it. And I don't know how else to describe that, you know? Um, so I can imagine how somebody would feel, you know, a year after being on the streets or, or five years after being on the streets. Um, if I was waking up right now under a bush in conditions other than, you know, ideal if I was homeless or whatever else and wasn't just camping um, that would that would wear on you you know over time that would definitely wear on you and you quite honestly I don't think I think you you would want to kind of stay away from people in society because there you would get tired of always constantly being dogged and uh, I think that's a lot of the problem. Um, and that's terrible. You know, it's it's kind of a vicious cycle. <clears throat> but today I've got a lot of people to talk to. And um, I'll try to get some on tape, you know. I'll try to, I'll try to record some of this stuff. But uh, no promises there. One thing I do want to do though is I want to I go to restaurants. Um, maybe some of you watching could help me out with this. I have no idea what happens to the food in restaurants throughout the day. I don't know if they throw it away, you know, like if they make too much. I'm thinking there should be a program where that excess food gets distributed. I don't know if there's a lot of it. I don't even know if it's possible. I don't know if health code would allow for that to take place. But I know when we was in the military, we threw away all kinds of food from the defect. Um, good food, you know, food full of nutrients and and whatnot um, that could really make an impact out here for some of these guys that I run into. 
And so I'm going to start looking into that. You know, if I don't get to do it a lot during the project, I'm going to do it afterwards when all things are said and done and kind of see if we can arrange pickup and delivery of the excess food um, from these restaurants. If any of you have any interest in that or know know about that, <clears throat> um, I'd be happy to listen because I think that would be a big blessing out here on the street. And uh, other than that, you know, I'll try to keep capturing the video and people are starting to roll into the parking lot now. Um, parked just outside of a, a main mini mall um, complex, so people are starting to try to come to work. So I got to get out of here and uh, go bathe up a little bit, clean my ugly mug. And I'll catch you guys later.